Hey guys, welcome back. So today, I've got a repeat. This mower, I actually did a video on one year ago. I picked it up for free, and it was in running condition. Really, the only issue with it were the drive wheels. The gears were worn out, so those wheels were replaced. The mower got a full tune-up, including draining the tank and cleaning the carburetor in the ultrasonic. And by the end of that video, this was a good running machine. Anyway, a few weeks after that video, I gave this mower to a friend. He lives about three hours away, and once he got it to his house, he filled it up with gas, and five or ten minutes later, it stalled, and that was it. And that was a year ago. So if I had to guess, I'd say water got into the carburetor, and most likely that is the issue. But that's what we're going to find out. So for the three-hour trip back, he did drain the gas out of the tank. So I'm going to add a little bit of fuel, try pulling it over, see if it'll start. Also, the oil, you know, I serviced it last year, and it only has a couple hours on the engine. So the oil is full and clean, and I know the rest of this machine should be pretty much perfect. It's really fuel that I need to figure out. So I'm going to add a bit of fuel to that tank. We'll pull it over and see if I get any signs of life. That should be enough. Okay, it started. First pull. Granted, the engine didn't sound happy, so there is something going on, most likely fuel-related, potentially spark. I'm not sure, but that's what we're going to find out. I think the best thing to do with something like this, where it's intermittent, is to just go outside and put it under load and see how it does. So that's what I'm going to do. But before I do that, there's a new issue that did not exist last year. When I went to shut it down, I let go of the bale, and I saw sparks coming from the brake. The engine bogged slightly, but it kept on running. So the kill wire, the kill switch, wasn't being engaged. So I had to tie the bale off and just pull the wire off the plug to kill the engine. So I think I'm going to look into that issue first before I bring it outside. So 
So the way this is supposed to work is when you press down on the bale, it moves this right here. When it's depressed, that releases the brake and allows spark. And when you let go, that engages the brake and it should also trip a switch to ground out the coil. So either this isn't making it all the way to the switch, maybe the wire is disconnected or something got bent out of shape. So I'm gonna get at least this cover off, see if I can get a look at what's going on and I may have to dig deeper. Yeah, I do need to dig deeper. So I'm gonna remove the fuel tank or at least release it from this tin here. Get this tin off, that way we can see the ignition coil, the kill wire, and the switch and see exactly where the issue is. I'm going to unplug the wire from the coil and use that to test the function of the switch that's over here to see if it's grounding out when the bale is released. Yeah, I don't see a problem here. Things are working the way that they should. So maybe it was just a little bit of corrosion and just, you know, unplugging the connector, moving this a few times, cleaned it up a bit. But since we're in this far, I'm going to remove the wire just to make sure this terminal is clean and do the same for this piece here that makes contact with this terminal here. Just make sure things are clean so that we always get a good ground.
Let's just try it real quick before finishing it up. Interesting. It just died. Let's try it again. Interesting. Let's check for spark. The spark is very strong, so it must be fuel related. I'm going to get the air box off. I want to drop the bowl and just catch what comes out, hoping it's just a bit of water. Just a bit of debris, nothing much. I think I see a bit of water down there. The fuel is also discolored, but some of that could have been the tray that it was poured into. But if there is water in there, it's just a tiny bit. I don't think that would be it. So let's take a look at the main jet. It might be the main jet. I think I see a little sliver of light, but it should be better than that. So let me run through that real quick, see if it gets any better. I'm just going to do the same for the hole here on the side. This is the fuel pickup from the bowl. And there's one on each side. It just goes straight through. No issues there. So let's try the light again. Don't see much of a difference. So I don't think the main jet was it. It went through the micro drill bits without issue. The bowl, it's fairly clean. You know, there's a little something right there but otherwise not too bad really the only thing suspicious is what's in this cup and i did clean the cup out before i put this in here and the tray i cleaned as well but some of that might still be from the cup or the tray i think a lot of that was in the bowl the fuel color doesn't look good either so yeah it could have just been that not sure but i'm going to test the fuel flow real quick and I think I'm just going to put it back together and try it again because I know I cleaned this and there's only a couple hours on the engine since it was cleaned. So I tend to think it's probably okay.
fuel flow is fine. Try it again. Nice. I mean, it starts. Doesn't sound any better, though. So I'm going to swap out that spark plug. It looked kind of old. I don't think I have a new one, but let me double check. I definitely have a used one. Maybe better than what's in there now. It might be the original plug. It is a Champion RJ19LM. And plug issues can definitely cause hard starting or stalling. So we'll try an NGK. It's a BR2LM. Slightly used, but much newer. I'd say there's no smoking gun here. The spark seems to be good. The carburetor is clean and the spark plug replaced. I wouldn't say anything has changed other than I can now shut it down when I let go of the bail. Restarting it might be a little bit easier with that NGK plug. The engine, it is still a bit unsteady, but I'm not really running it that long. You know, hopefully once it warms up, things will smooth out a bit. So yeah, let's get this outside, put it to work and see how it goes. So I was about ready to cut the lawn with this mower. So I rolled it out here in the sun and removed the fuel cap to add some more fuel into the tank and may have inadvertently found the issue. Let me show you. Did you hear it? That tank, it's building pressure in the sun, and it could cause damage to the tank or definitely push past the needle and seat. And the opposite will happen if I bring this back inside. The tank is going to pull a vacuum and prevent 
the fuel from advancing to that carburetor. So that, I think, is the issue. The interesting thing is if I just make the cap snug, it builds pressure. But if I keep turning it, it lets the pressure off and seems to start venting. So maybe it's user error or maybe there's something not quite right about this cap. I'm about 100% certain that it is the cap not venting properly when the cap is loose, which is not that intuitive. So I'm gonna do a little experiment. I'm just gonna pull the line off here, drain it into a bowl and validate that the tank doesn't drain all the way due to the cap issue. All right, let's try this out. The cap is off on the fuel tank, so there's no restriction. And that's the flow coming out. Looks like plenty of fuel to run the engine. So we'll put the cap on, start tightening it down. You can already see the fuel flow significantly reduced. And it might actually stop. So yeah, that's, that's not good. Let's tighten it down a little more. See, now it's better, worse. Picking up a bit, worse. Yeah, I think we need a new cap because that is not gonna run an engine. And that's the problem. The tank, it can't breathe. There's something wrong with the cap. So that's an easy fix. I'm now the proud owner of a new fuel cap. It's not the same kind. This one's more simple in design less to go wrong and much less money. This cap was available, but it was about $20. And this other cap was listed with this engine as also being the correct cap. And this one was only five bucks. So you can see there is a little hole right there. And that's how this cap vents. So we'll test that. Actually, I'll leave it off for now. We'll test that in a second. And the old cap, I never did find a hole. So I'm not sure how this cap vents. I mean, it doesn't, but I'm not sure how it's supposed to vent. You know, I guess an easy solution would be just to drill a hole right through it. And that would also fix the issue. But yeah, we'll fix it right. But let's do the test again. We'll drain the, get the tank draining. We'll screw this cap on and make sure the flow continues the way that it should. I think we're in business.
starts a lot easier now that the tank is venting properly. And that's something this mower has never done. Even looking back on the original video on this mower, it always took two, three, sometimes four pulls, but now it is consistently starting the first pull. So I am 100% sure this problem is fixed, but let's bring it outside, run it for a half hour or so, and just make sure there's no surprises. No issues to report, but I guess we kind of knew that because we tested it in the garage and that new cap sorted this issue out. Now, I wish I had caught this sooner and that's why I test equipment after I fix it before selling it or giving it to someone because depending upon the circumstances, you might find an issue that you didn't know about. And in this case, I used this mower about three times before giving it to my friend to cut this little area of lawn and it had no issues whatsoever, but I'm guessing the heat from the engine and the sun, it was just enough to build enough pressure in the tank to keep the mower running long enough. And when my friend used it, most likely it was a cloudy day and it didn't build enough pressure. And that's why he couldn't get this mower to work. Anyway, it's an easy fix. I think the biggest issue is just identifying what the problem is. So. I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.